So my research is called uh, Transforming and Commodity Experiences of Historical and Generational Trauma. Um, I've also got my thesis, like, uh, which I'll give to Danny, and so I might ask him to put it on your movie so that you also have access to it. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start with a disclaimer. And the um, reason why I'm going to start with this disclaimer is um, because some of the stuff I'm going to share with you is pretty personal. Um, I suppose I'm going to share with you a journey. And um, this journey is about uh, uh, redemption, it's about uh, resilience. And it's about um, the restoration of money. Um, and so some of the stuff I'm going to share, um, I'm not going to mention names, but um, they are real, a real uh, pivotal part uh, of this corridor. So this presentation represents or examines links between multi-deficit statistics Māori experiences of historical intergenerational trauma and colonisation. So my research was about making these links. Um, a few years ago, I uh, came across an article uh, by a professor from Canterbury University, a uh, sociologist, uh, psychologist, uh, criminologist, and um, he made a, he made the statement which said Maori crime is a fact of life. Then we on TV and said practically the same thing. And um, he also went on to say is wherever you find Maori, you will find crime. And he did this comparison between Hamilton, Christchurch, and Dunedin. And he says, you don't find much crime in Christchurch or Dunedin because there's not much Māori there. Um, I kind of like have a bit of an issue with that. Uh, issues in terms of uh, uh, context. And so what I did was I started researching the underlying themes behind what he was saying. And because part of the work I do is around sociology. So I began to look at some of the underlying themes. And I looked at what does labeling theory mean? And I looked at the underlying theme behind labeling theory and it says this. It brings the issue to the fore without giving the context. Now the thing about this sociological theory is this. They don't have to give it a context. Why? Because it stems from a Western worldview. Also looked at other uh, theories. One is uh, uh, symbolic interactionism. Symbolic interactionism says this: you are judged according to what you represent. And so um, I looked at another theory around the stratification theory, which basically means that doors are only open to you based on uh, the knowledge you have based on, again, what you represent. And um, from there I start to look at deficit statistics because they're very good at putting deficit statistics up there but not articulating where those deficit statistics come from. And so that's part of the journey that I'm going to share. So this is what I call my colonising tree. <laughs> Now, at its roots, the colonization, ideologies of superiority. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this, the doctrine of discovery, <coughs> globalization, prejudice, racism. Then we've got the mechanisms of this tree. And so, what I'm looking at, so these are the roots. This is historical intergenerational trauma based on loss of identity, loss of language, loss of heritage loss of land, or the sea manipulation. 
the legislative violations. And so my hypothesis, my theory is this. If this is our root, and these are the mechanisms, this is the fruit. You cannot get any other thing. If, if you put in rubbish, you're going to get rubbish fruit. So, to understand it, um, the links between Māori deficit statistics, Māori experiences of historic and generational trauma. So, we're going to focus on the history of colonization. I'm not too sure if you've touched base on this before. Oh, I'm going to take you on another dream. <laughs> so, this is the doctrine of discovery, legal justification of conquest. So, when you think back to the age of discovery, uh, European ambassadors and <coughs> emissaries were going out into the indigenous lands, wanting to trade with the indigenous peoples. And when they got there, they found other European emissaries or ambassadors. And so what they realised is that um, to stop themselves fighting amongst each other, they had to create some guidelines. And it was about setting standards of practice when they engage with indigenous peoples and in indigenous lands. <coughs> so, what it was, was about giving them a sense of legality to their actions. But for them to get that type of legality, they needed the sanction of the Catholic Church. Um, at their request of the European monarchies, <coughs> they sent out what they call papal decrees. You've touched on papal decrees? Mm -hmm. okay. So papal decrees are declarations of the Pope. And he sent these um, decrees out around the European world to define a proper lawful relationship between indigenous peoples and the European powers. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so this is an example of a paper board of peace. Um, there are a lot of paper board of peace, but I suppose in this um, particular presentation I'm going to focus on one particular one. But there are others who did a lot of damage, um, Tyrannus was a paper rule decree that um, uh, determined that if there were no people on the land, um, the European crown could claim it on behalf of the European monarchy. And so that was the particular paper rule decree that was used in Australia. It was also used in uh, areas of uh, North America. And it was also <coughs> used in the South Island. So after Hobson signed the the Treaty of Waitangi, he went down and he claimed the South Island on behalf of the Queen. Forgetting he couldn't do that because it was recognised that people lived there. So this is Romanus Pontifex 1455. Called for non Christian peoples to be invaded, captured, vanquished, subdued, and reduced to perpetual slavery, and to have their positions and property seized. By Christian monarchs. <coughs> now, what this map highlights is these are all European powers, and it highlights which countries they colonise. Now, if you look at Great Britain, they're in the pink. What it very clearly highlights is that they colonised more countries than any other European power. So, I, I hear that some of you are going to be doing introductory to law. Well, this is your introduction. <laughs> the doctrine of discovery is the founding element behind all laws in New Zealand. And it all stems from canon law from the Vatican. So when we look at America, you see
says here, America was built on two monumental crimes, the genocide of the Native American and the enslavement of the Africans. So we're going to look at some of the impacts of the doctrine of discovery on the indigenous peoples. So we know that 1492, Christopher Columbus, um, on behalf of Spain, enslaves the Arab people, or the Taino people. Um, he committed them to slavery, to dig for gold. Um, by 1555, uh, their whole nation became extinct. As a result of leaving, losing slaves, Christopher Columbus moves from um, the Caribbean to Africa and initiates the safe trade of the 1800s. During this process, there's a 500 year war against the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island and the extinction of 100 million of the people. Then we've got Australia, who also suffered genocide, extermination policies, and lost generations. So, when you look at indigenous deficit statistics, the implications are that historical intergenerational trauma is evident in all indigenous countries. Deficit statistics of education, employment, poverty, addiction, health, mental health, suicide, they are comparable right across the indigenous. 